Oh boy, we are starting off hot. Uh, just booted the system up. I think I was doing some Starfield modding or something. I don't remember what I was doing last stream. It was just goofing off. Uh, got some problems. So I keep getting Explorer and Combase.dll crashes here. Um, I think this is when I disabled the antivirus to get some Starfield mods working that I kind of, yeah, made some errors in judgment. <laughs> but it looks like I'm, I keep getting these uh, sec health error and stuff going on. So we're, we're, man, not a great way to start the day at all or start the stream for that matter but i was like yeah you know what i probably could get this all sorted out but instead i thought why not just live stream it so you can just suffer with me it's the best kind so first thing getting in here i noticed the taskbar whenever explorer crashes like if we launch explorer let's see if it crashes yeah it, it does crash so it's really interesting um so what you can do is pull up event viewer and you, you can actually do a start run command if you don't have access to uh, that. Uh, just do Windows key R and get the run command and then you could you could pull it up that way. But kind of interesting what's going on here. And I was like, hmm, it's, it's quite, a, ah, quite the day to suffer. So anywho, I, it could be a Windows hello, hello air. It's something with sec health for sure and it's intertwined with explorer why did i why did i set up my development environment in windows 11 i don't know i hate myself i guess that's the reason anywho uh what i'm trying now is let's of course run some updates um see what happens i can't run updates through here because this is actually part of explorer and so when it crashes this crashes and it doesn't go anywhere <laughs> but that's okay we can actually do and push the updates through powershell PowerShell to the rescue because it doesn't crash. It's PowerShell. It's powerful. So that's good. That's good. Um, so we're running uh, updates here. Uh, this is just from my website. I made an article a while back about this. Uh, if you look here, um, you can actually push your, your Windows updates through PowerShell. Now, typically, I do this in more of a domain environment, and then I just say, hey, this computer, and then you pipe it through. Um, but it can be used on a single single one right here. So this just installs all of them. We're going to update it a little bit and give it a reboot. But um, I don't know what else could be causing it. Because we weren't messing with... We weren't messing with any tweaks or anything last time. Ah, so we'll fix it. That That's what's on the agenda for today. Ah, let's get... Uh, let's see. Chatterino should be up and going. Let's... Let's check in with everybody. How's everybody doing on this glorious day of pain? Oh, let's see. Can Oh, is PowerShell not even working? Oh, PowerShell utilities? Fancy zones? Are you not working? Oh, I guess fancy zones. Is that going to work for me? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Until it crashes again. Um. Oh, my. Oh, my. All right. Well, we'll do the best we can here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Explorer is popping, uh, popping in and out because it keeps crashing. Uh, I have Event Viewer up over here. We can see that um, last crash was, uh, it says eight minutes ago, but I don't think that's right. Let's refresh it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're getting the Explorer EXE crash um failed faulty module past com base we're also getting the sec health error i believe as well um and then windows hello hello business provisioning all right yeah that's my updates um and now we're rebooting oh boy what a way to start what a way to start yeah <laughs> when made Windows 11 look like Windows 7 and my dad loves it. <laughs> I mean, Windows 7 had some good design. I still like a lot of that aesthetic in the old design. Game and thanks for the Prime, man. Uh, I'm going to need that Prime. I need to go grab a drink as this stream started out. It's 
going to be a rough one today. Buckle up. Because mm, it's 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 been a struggle all morning. I'm I'm not, I'm not going to lie here. I've had a lot of work to do. My brain's shot. We'll see where this goes. Uh I mean, yeah, Windows <laughs> Windows is the perfect operating system without any shortcomings or bugs. Um you know, I still love portions of Windows 10. There's parts of me where there's there's days where I'm like, I, I don't mind being in Windows 10. And there's times where I'm like, ah, oh, this is not bad. Today is not one of those days. But I, I remember a time when I thought that it was a beautiful time. All right. How are we doing? Let's see if we can pull up Sec Health. Um, maybe. Let's go settings. Hey, looks like update updates might have fixed it. Alrighty, that's weird. <laughs> that's never a good. It's like ah, uh, that's the fastest Windows has ever updated. I guess it was still catching up. All right, let's check a uh, security center Windows security. Uh, probably disabled still. Yeah. I, I turned this off because I was running uh, Starfield script extenders and they kept flagging them as viruses. Um, what is my history look like? Threat quarantine. Crypt inject. Dollar dash MSR. SFC loader.exe for Starfield. They're like, this is a virus. And I was like, um, no. So I just didn't. I turned all my virus off. I really wanted to play Starfield, okay? With the script extender. Um, I guess we could turn that back on. I wonder if it'll... Uh, I wonder if it'll mess up. Automatic sample submissions off. I mean, you really don't need to. Ah, sure, let's turn it on. Let's just... Let's just put it to stock settings and see what... Uh, what old event viewer? That was such a weird way to start a stream with the first boot up. Kind of makes me like, ah, oh, shoot, I don't know. All right, let's pull up uh, fancy zones. Fancy zones, you're not gonna work for me. What you doing, fancy zones? Falling down on the job here. Maybe it doesn't like event viewer. All right, whatever. There we go. Yeah, it just doesn't like that one. Okay. Ah, back. Oh, yeah, we could do a wing get upgrade all. That should be fine. Let's look at our startup this time. Event viewer is so nice uh, for, for that. This was the last, last bit. You know, I've been having hella problems. I think I got some hardware issues with this guy. With this computer. Just because even in Linux, I've been running into problems like uh, a lot of my game installs keep corrupting on me and now we're starting to run into this stuff and while this fixed it for now I have a feeling there's something else going on with my hardware because I look at the the corrupt game installs for big games like 100 gig plus and I've tried everything I mean I even removed like DOCP and XMP profiles we swapped out to a new NVMe drive we we've done it all to fix that corruption and it just keeps happening and now explorer just randomly starts crashing on startup and then i push through an update to kind of just do it there was a cumulative update which i'm sure overwrote like explorer.exe in there and fixed it for now i have a feeling this is going to come back again the driver detected on controller error on raid port 3. man i'm telling you there is something else going on with my hardware because for this type of corruption and stuff to happen between multiple OS's, uh, I don't know. Keybind, thanks for the raid, man. I suspect the CPU. Uh, yeah, I'm ready for... No, I already switched out the NVMe drive. So we know it's not that. Could be bad memory, but we've already done a memory test. Maybe it's the motherboard. Maybe we're getting a failed RAID controller of some sort. Even though I'm not using RAID, the controller still controls the input-output, does it not? So maybe that controller on the motherboard's going bad? Man, that'd be such a wonky thing. Usually it's an all-or-nothing kind of deal there. 
So, yeah, I disabled XMP, so we're not doing anything. But it definitely sounds like a CPU issue. It is known to affect the SSD. Okay. When was the last time you upgraded your BIOS? Not that long ago. Don't think. All right, well, I don't, I forgot what I even labeled this stream, but whatever it is, it's wrong. It's a hardware troubleshoot screen because I kind of want to fix this before it gets worse. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, uh, let's just pull up like CPU Z. Um, let's see what we got. I don't, I don't even have CPU Z installed. Let's just grab it real quick. I think I have H, yeah, I have HW info, but I like CPU Z a little bit better. It usually spits out the uh, motherboard model number a lot easier. But I bet you there's some upgrades. Maybe maybe I have a really bad one. All right, let's see. What are our main board? We got the Prime X 57, uh, Prime X 570P. It doesn't show what a revision 51. Let's see what we we got for. Um, BIOS update. Should we do a BIOS upgrade on stream? I think we should. Is that an Ace? Oh, I freaking hate Asus boards. That's what's wrong with this system. It's an Asus board. Their shit sucks. Asus can suck it. That's what I think. It's Asus's fault. That's that's where the ah. That's what's wrong with this whole thing. Ah, uh, five seventy. Uh, was it a pro? I think it was a pro. Hmm, that does not look like my board. Yeah, that, that looks like way more fancy. Uh, mine's P dash P maybe. Yes, this looks like something I'd buy. Yes, cheaper. Here we go. This is more my speed. Oh, well, the maroon hat hacker. I am so glad that you caught one of my streams. It's been a fantastic start to the stream. We've already broken windows and fixed it all in one go. And we're only 18 minutes into the stream. So now we're going to do a BIOS upgrade on stream using this cheap motherboard that I bought. That sucks. From Asus. This board has some cool pictures, but man, problems. Big problems. Need to throw in dumpster. But before we do that, let's upgrade the BIOS. And worst case, it's going to be the shortest stream I've ever done because I bricked my studio PC. Hmm. All right, we're on revision. Oh, damn, this one was released a couple months ago. Uh, 4802 BIOS. Improved system stability. That's good. Uh, the last one before that was... 4602 and then 4408. Oh, damn. I think I did. I'm bet I'm at 4403. So let's grab the latest and greatest, I guess. While updating BIOS, unplug your PC or you're going to have a reason to get a new one. No, no, it's fine. We have the same board. The chips that died on mine not long ago. Bud, that's good. Asus, quality products, if you only want it to last a couple years, they take the Apple methodology and make sure it self-destructs within a two or three year period of time, so you have to go buy a new one. Asus, quality. <laughs> ah, what a bunch of jackets. All right. Oh, bah. How are we going to do this? We'll just extract that there. Let me grab a USB drive. Portal open. Oh, what do we got? Ah, there we go. Alrighty. What do we got? This PC. Oops, wrong one. Ah, oh, here we go. Alrighty, untitled. Uh, what was I loading on this one? Don't know. Don't know, don't care. Alrighty. Let's just grab these guys. Make sure it's FAT32. 
yeah <laughs> ndfs would not work very well um but yeah that's probably a good good thing to check shall we let's just go disk management and figure that out what do we got for that one untitled I don't think I have enough discs. It is Fat32. Hot dog. So we're there. We're good. Let's eject that guy. Uh, ah. Good stuff. All right. Um, I usually like to remove it from the front port. Whenever I do a BIOS flash, I like to make sure it's in one of the back ports that's directly connected to the motherboard because you just never know if those headers will like cut out during the firmware update and then you're screwed. So, pro tip there. Uh, okay, so, well, that's in there. Let's uh, let's update us some BIOS. I don't know why the BIOS renamers there. That's kind of weird, right? Uh, did anybody catch the model or version we were on? I don't know. BIOS update time on stream. Here we go. Portal close. Let's do it. Oh, man. Only $160. I'm pretty sure I got like a micro center combo special kind of deal going on. Can I catch the BIOS? Yay. All right. We are on version. I hate these new BIOSes. They suck. Uh, 4602. So we're not too far back. We're like two, two iterations of the BIOS. But uh, I got this on... Uh, on launch so let's go over to tool probably flash tool all right that looks good to me load it up uh, please whatever sure we backed it up yes read the file do you want to update this this bios here we go yep here we go processing yeah i disabled docp for docp xmp whatever you want to call it I disabled that because we kept getting corruption and I was like well maybe maybe the over overclocking of the memory maybe that profile was a problem I don't think so though so well, let's load this up see how it goes we should just go pull the plug on that while uh, while it's updating just to see what happens <laughs> Yeah, it could be the CPU. <laughs> I'm buying a damn Intel the next time around. We might go on Micro Center and just be like, hey, what kind of combo specials do you have? And then we're just going to buy an Intel one and then swap all these, these components out on the next stream. Let me ask you, do you like your computer? <sighs> I, don't, I don't think Asus wants to ask me that right now. <laughs> but it's never the cpu unless it's the cpu i mean i have run this thing ragged like if this was a hot like, like a hot rod car i'd be redlining it about every week or so so i'm pretty rough on a machine and this isn't exactly high-end parts we're using this is like bottom barrel residential crap what's on sale i grab so for it to crap out on us i i don't fault amd or asus that much i think they could build a better product but i don't fault them that much because i mean i have put it through the motions and i've definitely got my money's worth out of it but still it would be rather disappointing <laughs> get micro center to sponsor a build i actually uh they they uh they bought a couple sponsor spots from me, actually, uh, like a year or two ago. So I actually did run some spots for Micro Center. I should have done a better job on those ad spots. Truth be told, I was pretty lazy and just kind of ran the B-roll they gave me and just call it a day. But, you know, I still love Micro Center, so they get a free plug for me. Still better than first gen, yeah. I actually still have a first gen 1700 in in the other room i actually gave it to my son so he's rocking a 1700 first gen ryzen and it's pretty good although that one had a problem the usb bus and that one was a gigabyte motherboard 
the USB bus had issues supporting, I think it was like Oculus. You remember the CV1 Oculus before Facebook bought it and ruined it? Ruined it. Uh, that one was kind of interesting because I actually had three different uh, things to triangulate your position. And it had problems powering the third sensor on the first gen Ryzen. <laughs> the first gen Ryzen lost to a 4770. Ouch. Yeah. But yeah, I did have the USB issues with the first gen. I would say this this computer has been pretty good to me over over the past years. I think I think I got it in 2020 because I remember standing in line and we were all wearing masks, uh, waiting to get our voucher to get the 5600. I actually wanted to get like I think the 5950, but they were all out by the time I got there, so. I ended up settling for a 5600, which has been a great machine, great, great chip. We're doing a BIOS upgrade. So right now we're upgrading an X570P. I have run this thing through the motions. We just finished trash talking ASUS for the past 10 minutes and uh, Explorer was constantly crashing on the Windows side of things. This is a dual boot system. And on the Linux side of things, we have been getting a lot of game corruption errors. We have disabled DOCP and XMP, so hopefully it's not that. I figured let's upgrade the BIOS and see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Oh, Z80 has a, a X570 Pro have issues with the USB. Mostly reboot the USB devices disappear. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I didn't even know the shout out thing. I don't even know what that is. Uh, I don't know. I don't. It's been a while since I've had a BIOS upgrade fail. Um, it'd be interesting. Speak of the devil. What do we got? Uh, when raid configuration was built, restore setting to raid mode. Okay. Well, sure. Uh, usually what I like to do after a BIOS upgrade, uh, I like to load optimized defaults and then kind of look over the options here um let's set it up again how we kind of like it just kind of changing a few things in our bios for optimization i do a lot of virtualization in this machine so we're gonna like iommu and a couple other things we probably will want to do as well um they did change some stuff okay uh svm mode we do want virtualization okay SATA configuration. What do we got? HCI, raid mode disabled. I think we will just leave those disabled. Some of these settings did change. And when you have settings change, that's why you always want to load the optimized defaults. I wonder if they got rid of IOMMU. ERP ready. Uh, no. Power off. Okay. Anything else here? SRIOV. Why do they always put this in here? Like, you can't even get a damn card to support the SIROV. I mean, you can, but usually it's like eBay special, like a Radeon 4000 or something. It's just ancient. Um, I feel like we could enable that. Resize bar. I don't know. I kind of want to try resize bar. There's a couple options uh, for PCI pass through that you can utilize. Or that although I'm not really gonna be doing that yeah uh, resize bar supposedly improves GPU performance okay well, I'm all about it let's go there A USB that's fine just flipping through if there's anything else network stack configuration you think that would be enabled anywho uh, smart information do we have any smart information here error rate read error rate zero it looks like any of these give me any issues i don't even know i don't really see anything in raw okay uh the rest of these are good we got two two terabyte uh nvmes as well nothing for pbs overclocking nope not gonna touch it cbs no we're gonna go iommu enabled not going to touch anything else. And that's about it for that. I think that's good. Um, CSM 
we can leave that disabled. Everything these days is UEFI anyway, so doesn't matter. I think this is good, guys. These are a summary of our changes. Selects TPM device, enable firmware TPM to enable discrete TPM. Well, that's weird. I don't remember changing that. One second. Did I? Huh. Oh, RAM speed too. Okay. Let's fix that while I'm while I'm here. Okay, blah blah blah. ROM chip replaces the system will not boot if it's encrypted. Okay, whatever. Cool. Alrighty, that's all good. And then the last thing is enabling DOCP. Where is that? Did we have it? Well, it must have been on AI tweaker, maybe. Memory frequency. Um, I believe this was the 3200. Although, I believe we do it a different way than this. Is it the first option? Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, let's just put that back to auto. You should have just let me do it. Y'all could have just laughed at me. <laughs> All right, cool. We're good. So here's the summary of our things. We're going to do in the DOCP or XMP profile. SVM above 4G decoding, resize bar, and the rest is good. We'll see how this feels. I would notice even when I booted into Linux earlier, it was a little sluggish. Not gonna lie, it was very sluggish, which it was an Arch based install with, oh goodness. I think maybe 500, 600 packages, so pretty minimal install. There we go. All right, so we got those. Let's go ahead and boot into Arch. I'm kind of curious. I want to try that Starfield install again. I think it's just I don't want to do anything today. So it gives me an excuse of why I can just watch progress bar. Uh, let's see. Alrighty, let's see what we got. Oh, Starfield. Oh, I guess it was doing it, so... Oh, I guess it was right there at the reading portion. So I guess it already downloaded and it just needed to verify. Okay, well, never mind. I guess I'm not going to get to slack off too much. Because it's going to tell us really fast. Mine... My saturation might be a little weird, but this, I don't think it's that bad. I do like the Magewell capture cards the best. They're a little bit pricey, but I find that they're a lot better than the Elgato crap that I got in there now. The Elgato 4 Stream Deck Pro or whatever I got, it's, so, it's, it's, it's treating me okay, but if I'm being honest, I still miss my Magewell. I should probably switch back to it. I have not tried Regatta OS. It sounds like a, something I'd eat. Mm, tasty. But uh, no, no, I haven't actually tried it. A lot of weird Linux distro spins I don't really care about. At the end of the day, I'm just like, eh. Arch, Debian, I'm, I'm a happy guy. You put me in any distro, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Have you tried Zero? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually had, uh, what was it, six streams back? We had the creator... Um, it was Steve from, uh, I guess Dark Zero or no, uh, I forget what his handle was. Anyway, yeah, the creator of Zero Linux was on and did that crash? Ah, oh, son. All right. Well, damn, I think I'm going to have to. All right. Well, oh, no, man, Alex, I don't know if I told you Quake 2, I used to play semi-pro back in the late 90s for the OGL uh, OGL team. We even won a couple tournaments on... Uh, you guys remember Mplayer? I don't know. I might be dating myself here unless there's some 40-year-olds in the crowd. Uh, man, that was fun. I loved, I loved me some Quake 2. I never got into Quake 3 as much as you think. Uh, Quake 2 is my jam, though. What kind of artifacting? We got artifacting going on up here. What the hell is going on with this system? Oh, 
No steam going. All right. What's happening? Like. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. High, high school. You're laughing. I loved it. I played to like 2 or 3 in the morning every every time I got a chance. Q2 DM1 Edge map I played literally over a thousand times. I did see that uh, Quake 2 did a remaster on here. Um, instead, we're just staring at the store here. Let's go here. If you guys didn't know, this actually just got re-released, I think a month ago on Quake 2. They actually fixed it up and they did a re-release on August 10th. And this was cool. So they fixed a lot of the resolution so you can do like widescreen now. Um, they added a lot of performance fixes. They added a multiplayer mode so you don't have to like I don't even I don't even know if GameSpy is still active. I think GameSpy servers were the last to shut down for Quake 2. But Oh man, so much fun. If this breaks, I'm just going to be like, oh, let's go play some Quake 2. I know Quake 2 will load. You can load that on a freaking calculator, man. Uh, yeah, I'll probably end up buying the Cyberpunk expansion. I just haven't uh, gotten through Starfield yet. Oh, GameSpy got replaced by OpenSpy. All right. Nice. For the most part, I still think this system's completely borked, but I think I should replace it with an Intel one and see if that corrupt... That'd be hilarious. I still want to just see if the corrupt files is still there. <coughs> I still think it's a hardware issue probably, but it might be like a Steam prefix that's been there for a while. But then again, I, I installed it on Flatpak, which puts it in a whole different new prefix and it's still aired out with corrupt errors. So I don't know. I don't know on that. Ah, all right. 244 we did get a driver detected a controller error it's not the first time i've seen that error okay maybe uh event properties i almost want to filter this if we could go with like a filter custom view and we could probably change this up a little bit um let's just create a new custom view Let's just go with last 24 hours, errors uh, by source. And let's just type in STOR in VME. Store in VME for the source. Um, ah, store, is that there? Does, all right, let's, I guess we gotta check it. Windows isn't smart enough to autofill. Okay. There it is. Great. Store NVMe, all users, all computers, error, last 24 hours. How many how many of these errors are we getting from our storage? Storage errors. Okay. So I've only been that was yesterday. Man. Okay. I think the storage controller is starting to go out on this. And it's saying store NVMe. Whoa. I think the motherboard's going out on us. Because we are just getting some weird stuff happening. Uh, we could check smart. Check temps that. All right. We could try that. Uh, we should have pretty good temp controls in the system itself. Uh, let's look at HW info. See if we can't troubleshoot that. I think we're going to have to build a new system here. I mean, most of my temps are really good, especially on the CPU side of thing. Motherboard. PCEH is 72. That's a little high. Uh, it's not guaranteed to be valid, though, so that might be erroneous. Internal chipset temperature. Uh, that's fine. Smart drives. Uh, PNYs are all 30s. Uh, this one is our NVMe, a little bit higher. Our NVMe's are running about 50 Celsius. Probably could toss on like maybe a heat sink or something and bring those temps down like five or 10 degrees. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's not, 
there's nothing that jumps out here that says, hey, this is messed up. Other than the fact it says Asus everywhere. Well, that's actually the internal temp for that chipset, the 72. So this one right here, I believe it even puts it in the notes. Internal chipset temperature. This value is read directly from the chipset, so it is higher than a temperature reported by the main board sensors located in the vicinity. I guess that's a little bit higher, but still nothing that concerning. It's not like it's 90. Thoughts on Brightech 09? Uh, he, man, he, he's on the content treadmill, man. I like his voice. I like Brightech's voice. SDI tool. Oh, you got to do SDI origin, man. Origin doesn't support Windows 11. No, you can't do normal SDI, right? Aren't they the ones that did did the malware? I think tomorrow I'm going to workshop a system. Um, I think we're going to swap out the motherboard and then also the CPU with an Intel. This one looks like it's dying. No, no water cooled. Um, that's uh, It's an AIO. I think I did it just for the noise. So I guess it's water cooled, but it's not like a closed loop or anything. We could do a Cinebench. Um, I think Wingate actually has Cinebench. See if it craps out on us. Yeah, there's there's Cinebench. Let's just grab that. I should probably add that to the tool. Ah, although, I mean, how many people are really doing Cinebench? Yeah, we're going to get the R23 Cinebench. We'll run it. See what we get on our attempts. Alrighty. And then we'll just take this. Shoot. Put this over here. And then we'll run Cinebench and just kind of watch it. Hmm. Cinebench is a little bit more hefty than I remember. There we go. Cinebench. Ah, well, whatever. Cinebench. Did I not? Uh... Okay, there we go. It's like, I swear it's in here. Let's put that over here. Let's adjust that. Ah, perfect. Alrighty, let's start uh, multi-core. Here we go. We'll start stretching its legs, start firing it up over here on the left side. And kind of keep an eye on our temps. I wonder if the chipsets will go up much. I imagine not. You might see like ADC on the chipset, but yeah, if your CPU is broken, it would crash now. I mean, we're looking pretty good. I don't think it's the CPU. I think it's honestly the controller in the motherboard. It does. It's kind of weird that we're not seeing much on the some of the CPUs going up, but man, it's I don't even hear it kicking up over there. Could be an I.O. controller, possibly. <laughs> I remember when ASUS ports were killing the 7000 series CPUs? Well, this is a 5000 series, so... Looks like we're getting pushed right in between the 9th gen and... Oh, you know what? It doesn't even show here. We're just ahead of a 9th gen Intel. Which I think is pretty accurate for the time. 2020, I want to say, is 10th gen Intel and 9th gen. And I believe the 10th gen, or was it the 11th gen that where they started doing the efficiency cores? Because Intel was the first to really start doing that. Yeah, that is an H, so it is a laptop core. Oh, 12th gen was the E cores. Okay. So I'm off by a bit. I probably should start looking at a replacement here. Although this still looks good, as you can see, it's really barely even touching the, the temp package. The whole CPU package isn't even hit 60C yet. And the chipset temperature has actually gone down in degrees, if that makes any sense. Okay. Buy a new motherboard from eBay. Ugh. That sounds like a risky proposition. Oh, wow. Okay. 2030. Still got some time on that. X570 boards are hard to find. Yeah. What was the last AM4 boards out? Was it the 500 series for the AM4? I want to say it was. I can't definitively say it's the motherboard. But I think we're, we're 
it should be at max temp right now. It's just chewing right through these soda benches. We're not even breaking 60C. Chipsets, you know, pretty standard. Uh, dim temperature. Everything looks good, man. We're not really even hitting storage. The fact is, the funny thing is, since the CPU is kicking up and the heat sink has to do a little bit more work, it's pushing more air in the system, which is dropping the overall temperature of the rest of the components in the system. So as we're pushing it, instead of the temps going up, it goes up a little bit on the CPU package. But if you look right here, it's actually gone down on the chipset and a lot of the rest of the system, especially the storage drives you can see the temps actually have decreased because it's just pushing more air into the box which is kind of wild but i think we've i think we've got everything we need here um it i don't know if it craps out on linux but like i get keep getting game install errors and corruption on big games in linux like 100 gig plus that could be a steam error we had Explorer crashing, which possibly when I was modding Skyrim out, I modified Windows Defender because it kept flagging the the or Starfield script extender executable as a virus. And I was like, ah, oh, it's not a virus. And uh, I disabled that, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's that. I just keep getting all these weird things happening, both Windows and Linux that I'm kind of like, I think something's going on with the storage controller in the motherboard. It doesn't look like it's a, in, in good shape. But the 5600X has been, it, like I said, it's been a great system and I've really put it through the motions and uh, you know, it just keeps on, keeps on ticking. Well, the problem with the NVMe is all my sockets are filled. We are using multiple NVMEs and we're switching the NVMEs between installs. So on Linux, we're on the NVMe. Here, let me, let me go over here with this. So on Windows, we're on the D Western Digital Black, a two terabyte NVMe. And then when we switch over to Linux, we're on the Spec M2 two terabyte NVMe over here. This one's uh quite a bit cheaper I cheaped out on that imagine imagine that um, but I mean we're switching between the NVMe drives we originally had Linux on these uh, PNY drives we were using a, a RAID 0 and uh, pushing all those in it was a weird setup everyone always made fun of me when I went to install Linux and had three different hard drives that I was mapping to different spots but uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's if it's NVMe, it's the controller for sure. The controller is in the CPU, not the Mobo. It's the SATA controller that's on the Mobo. Okay. I don't know then, Alex, because when I was installing on Steam, I was installing on the PMY drives, which was SATA based, and it was still running into a corrupt drive error or corrupt game files error. And then I switched it over to the NVMe drive and upgraded the NVMe to the two terabyte one, which I just showed. And it still gave me the corrupt game files. I mean, it's just kind of bonkers. So we, we've, we've done all, all the things you guys are mentioning with the same result. Memory issues makes the most sense here. Um, we could do a MIM test. Let's, it's been a little bit since the last MIM test. Let's run that. Because I just... I'm at a loss. I really am. I, I, I think it is the motherboard. If I had to guess, and based on everything I've seen and just kind of my general feelings, I feel like it's something with the motherboard. Oh, man, I missed the... Yeah, AS Rock. I agree with that. I hate AS Rock. I actually hate AS Rock more than I do Asus. I had a, what was it? I did a live stream like three years ago about doing PCI pass-through. And for PCI pass-through, I was doing it on an AS Rock motherboard. And 
Oh my gosh, it was a nightmare. The AOS Rock motherboard, it was a cheaper model and they didn't separate separate the IOMMU groups, so you just were screwed. 100%. And I was like, "Oh, that was awful." So, what are we going to do for mem test? I want to say I have parted magic we'll use. I like parted magic. It looks pretty. They used to be 100% free and now I think I think they still I think they charge like 8 bucks or something for a recovery disc. I can't remember. But it's just glorified. You could just download the mem test ISO and just run mem test. <laughs> oh, Louis Rosman talked about AS Rock breaking the law. So what's everybody's favorite motherboard then? Like I don't know. A gigabyte burned me on the first gen Ryzen. They had the bad USB bus. So, I mean, damn, I don't know. I don't even know what direct to recommend on that. All right, let's see. Oh, do we have MIM test? MIM test. I guess I should just do MIM test. <laughs> Part of Magic doesn't have MIM test anymore. No, they got to have MIM test, right? I guess I should go to settings, maybe. Maybe they don't. System stability tester. What's that? I don't think I've ever run that. Uh-huh. Well, that's just strange. I've never seen this tool. Let's do 32. No, we can't do 32 threads. We only have 12 threads. Let's do five turns. Test. Bench. Okay, well. Hmm. And if we bench, okay. I don't know what that is. I was just running. I was, I was curious. Yeah, we can just grab yeah, mem test ISO. I thought, I thought, I swore it was in here, but I guess I was wrong. Old mem test 86. Maybe they they lost the rights to it or something since they were charging. Uh, bootable. Do we want that? Yeah, let's grab that. That is such a small ISO. All right. Let's mount. Oh, I don't have access to this drive because we're booted on the drive. That's right. Sad face. All right. Reboot. I thought I had mem test on there, but apparently I am wrong. No, yeah, that was a rescue ISO. You guys remember Hirons? Hiren's uh, recovery back in the day. For those that repaired computers in the 2000s, most people remember Hiren's. That was a fun one. Hiren's, I think, ended up getting in trouble. I think he had too many tools on there and some of them weren't sanctioned. Ah, dude, how many times am I gonna miss that BIOS? Oh, Hiren's based on Windows 10 PE now. Man, maybe I need to download that. Chonka, thanks for the, the Prime. All right, let's try this out now. Oh, Arch has mem test. All right, well, I definitely have Arch on Ventoy. So if we don't have mem test, we don't, but we definitely have Arch. Failed to parse event TPM final event slot. Hmm, that was interesting. All righty. Set font tur V28N. Get that mem test. Okay. Uh, does Arch have mem test? You lied to me. Oh no, you 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 didn't actually. <laughs> mem test 86 plus. Okay, it's installed. How the hell do I mount launch it? Oh, was it on the grub menu? Oh. Man, I love that my chat's completely filled with reboot. Dang. Called out. <laughs> I think most... Actually, now that you guys are saying that, I think most distros do have mem test actually built in. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm misremembering that. Ah, dude, come on. I have missed my BIOS I don't know how many times now. I swear this new BIOS has like less of a less of a catch period for me to catch it or maybe i enabled fast boot or something now nah, i know i always read it at the wrong time 
Welcome to my life. All right, here we go. Arch. There we go. Run mim test 80 plus. All right, here we go. So we'll run that. Here we go. Do we run into any errors? That is the question. Oh no. We, 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 we might have a few errors with our memory. Oh Lord. Oh, well, maybe it gets better. It's only 4% through. <laughs> oh no. Oh my. Holy smokes. All right. Uh, first pass, we were at 3,049 errors. Uh, I, I, I think we found the problem here. Oh, well, we're over 4,000 errors now. 5,000 errors. Wow. Wow. Yeah, the ram, ram sticks are done for. I think we... Let, let's escape. One second. Let's run uh, this without DOCP enabled. Uh, my keyboard doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's that. We just need to download more RAM. Okay. Dude, that, that, that BIOS is really, really touchy. Uh-oh. What happened to my, my face? Well, that's not even the same computer. Whoa. What? What happened? What? It's it's all gone? Oh, God bless. What is going on? What a hot mess. All this is... Everything is dying. We're, we're, we're in the dark. I got nothing. Everything is black. My stream PC is black. I can't hear anything. And we're testing it without the... The, uh... The thing. Okay, the first test, it's testing now without DOCP enabled. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. It is so dead. It is so dead. Eh, even more errors without DOCP. Uh, well, what a successful stream. This was amazing. I love you all. Goodbye.